But first, a message from our sponsor. Jocelyn, what the hell are you doing? I'm building the ultimate kitty fighting machine. That's horrifying. And pointless. Just play cats. Play cats? Oh, you mean Android Lloyd Webber's hit Broadway musical Cats, based on the 1939 book by T.S. Eliot, Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats? Wait, you know what all that stuff is, but you're using a litter box to build a battle bot? I'm not what you would call normal. Cat stands for Crash Arena Turbo Stars, and it's a fun, free-to-play mobile game. You help a cute cartoon cat cause mechanized mayhem with a fully automated kitty death machine. You challenge players around the world in kitty combat. Plus, there's wacky physics and a ton of customization. You can change your cat's appearance, weapon loadout, and parts for your vehicle. And just like in real life, you can join a gang, which is basically a guild. Conquer entire cities with your gang mates like Mew York or Mew Scow. Oh, this is just like that movie, Meow Mix Furry Road. I think you could come up with a better joke. Oh, I forgot about Cats All-Stars. All-Stars is a bi-monthly competition mode with modified arenas and game modes, like different terrain, burning ground, and low gravity. The game is available for iOS and Android via a link in the description. Download the game using that link and get extra rewards that will boost your progress. I can't wait to get in there and pound those pussies. <sighs> I should really get Kieran to do these with me. Wow, James, this is really awesome. I'm loving the Cinemasker Video Film History Museum you built. It's really amazing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, it's been a long time on Cinemasker that we have not discussed the Three Stooges. Ooh. And the Three Stooges are such a such a big place in my heart. I mean, when it comes to classic comedy, mm -hmm. especially slapstick, they are just the yeah. best. They yeah. are mm, right up there. I don't think it gets much better. Honestly, like uh, I used to watch it, like binge it when I was a kid. It used to just be on all the time. They did the Turner, New Year's. I think it was Turner Classic Movies. Yeah. I was oh, just like, maybe. Yeah, they did the New Year's marathons. So or AMC, all that. I can't remember. Yeah, One there of those. Were, there were AMC used to do the, the, the New Year's marathons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I um I also used to watch them t uh, TMC. What was it? Leslie Nielsen had a show. Yeah, the, the, the yeah, and it was oh, like the School of Hard Knocks, the University yeah. of Knuckleheads, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So no. I watched a lot of it on there. Yeah, and, my, whenever my grandfather was up, he would watch them. Mm -hmm. He watched AMC or TMC, whatever it was. Yeah, you mentioned your, your grandfather, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it's definitely like a generational thing where like um. If parents pass it down. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, a kid's not gonna find it on their own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they have such a great appeal though because it it it's timeless because people who don't even like black and white movies, there's certain people who just don't want to watch unless it's in color, they still won't mind the Three Stooges. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. they just have that lasting appeal. So they had a long history. At first in the 1920s, they appeared on stage. And then in the 30s, they started appearing in short films uh, all the way up until the late 50s. And then um, they were being, all those shorts that they did were being syndicated on television. And then throughout the 60s, they made feature films. So they pretty much did like every yeah. medium. Yeah. They adapted to the times. They were in a video yeah. game as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Which actually is based on a few uh, sh shorts. Like yeah, one the of them. pie throwing and stuff. Yeah, yeah, punch drunks. I think it was called. <laughs> With where he, whenever he he whenever Curly hears Pop goes the weasel, yeah, he has to like punch people. Yeah. <laughs> hey fiddler, give us that weasel tune again. <laughs> Do you have a favorite lineup of the Stooges? Because there there are more than one. You know, there's Larry Moe and Curly. Then there's also Larry Moe and Shemp. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you were to, were to go um, chronologically, uh, Larry Moe and Shemp was first before uh, Curly. But that was back in their uh, vaudeville days mm -hmm. when they were on stage. There's a very convoluted history. Originally, their leader was a guy named Ted Healy. And it was called Ted Healy and his Stooges. Um, they even had a part in a feature film, Soup to Nuts in 1930 and that was actually technically their first you know feature film debut and that was with the Larry Moe Shemp lineup. So uh, Curly died of a stroke, uh, Shemp died of a heart attack but they always had this mentality that the show must go on so they always just kept you know kept yeah. it going. Yeah. Boy that must have been hard because uh, Moe, um, his brothers were, were Curly and Shemp. So yeah, wow. even though they were the three brothers, um, the Horwitz brothers, but they did not um, actually uh, 
appear all together. They actually, actually, no, technically they did appear all together in one short, but never as the Three Stooges. Uh, so it was always Larry. Larry was always, Larry Fine was the other one. You're from Philadelphia, I believe. Yeah, too, right? yeah, yeah. there's a restaurant where he yeah. was born, I think. Yeah, Larry's. on South Street. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. uh, what's it called? They had the, the picture of him with the violin. Yeah, and uh, after they left Ted Healy, Mo became their manager. So mm. Mo was actually the one, um, you know, making the deals. He kept them going. You know, one, it was like one of the longest contracts, like, yeah, you know, in entertainment, you know, mm. just went through all these decades. So, yeah. So, so Curly was set. Was did they like shoot stuff with? Wait, so were Shemp's mm -hmm. videos? I mean, not videos. Yeah, but films yeah. first. Yeah. Um, well, th that was in their vaudeville days, but um, they did make that one feature film, Soup the Nuts, mm -hmm. um, which had Shemp. But then Shemp went and did his own thing, and he was doing his own thing separately. And they got Curly to fill in. Um, and then after Curly died, then they got Shemp back and, mm. uh, um, that makes sense. but yeah, and then of course there was Joe Besser for a couple years. Yeah, Cur um, was that Curly Joe or, or there was yeah, Joe Dorita after, too or whatever. Yeah, later. Joe Dorita was Curly Joe. Yeah, and, which uh, wasn't he like the worst because he, he didn't um, want anyone to hit him and stuff like that. Joe Besser. Yeah. Joe Besser was the yeah, one. Okay. Joe yeah. Besser was, was usually considered the, the worst dude. <laughs> okay. I mean, um, I then, think my favorite is obviously the cast from the 2011 reboot. I think that I'm just kidding. I didn't see that piece of shit. <laughs> Actually, I saw it. Uh, believe it or not, it was great. Really? Yeah, it was. Wow. It was shockingly good because th it was three guys yeah. who just were completely impersonators, the yeah. Stooges, and they they nailed it. Like I like those actors and other things. Yeah, I think the advertise the stuff with Jersey Shore just really. I was like, oh nah. well. The thing is, I think the Three Stooges would have done stuff like that if they were alive. They now. might have. Yeah, just um, Jersey Shore is real dated. Yeah, it just seemed like it almost felt like they were still alive. I was like, holy really? shit! It was like. You know how people impersonate Elvis, and yeah. like you know they're not really Elvis, yeah. but you like to think in your imagination that it's that performer like, yeah, still like alive. Like yeah, like Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I thought, because I went into it thinking like, oh, this, this is shit, I'm yeah. gonna hate this. It was actually really good. I did a review on it, yeah. and that was the only thing I ever did, Three Stooges on Cinemasco. <laughs> and wow. we're changing that right now. Yeah. So well, um, now I have to chat. Now I feel bad. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, I, it's honestly, actually, I don't remember yeah. the, the and, reboot. And they use the, um, yeah, I don't think anybody does. Uh, they use the like the all the old techniques. They use the dummies and everything. Well, like, it was it actually, by um, the Farley brothers, right? Oh, was it? I think so. Mm. I okay. could be wrong, but I, I know they were big. It was directed mm. definitely by fans. I believe huh. it's the Farley brothers you son of a bit you know my favorite stooge has got to be mo because he's <laughs> such an asshole uh, mo is is just like he is constantly um <laughs> verbally insulting yeah, them yeah. and physically Beating insulting them too, yeah. yeah he's yeah. abusing them all the time but he's always scolding them for being dumb and mm -hmm. It's like just because they're a little bit less dumb than, than he is. Yeah, he's not all much idiots. smarter. I know. No, like I like yeah. how uh, Curly always wants to see. Seems like he wants to hit him, but won't. Like he's just like, yeah, Ugh, like yeah. He, you know, he does the like Ugh, kind lot, of thing. Yeah, a lot of times <laughs> they don't really like fight back. He, Mo kind of has like the final word. Yeah. yeah. Um, sometimes uh, one of my favorite moments is whenever they they accidentally hit him or something. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mo. I didn't know you were standing there. He's like, oh, I'm sorry, Mo. I'm sorry. And he's like, oh, that's okay. He, he like, yeah. pretends it doesn't bother him. And you know <laughs> what he's going to do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's all right, kid. Accidents can happen in the best of families. Oh, oh. I kind of like preparing for this. I haven't watched it since I was a kid. Mm. So I watched uh, the two you sent me, The Disorder and The mm. Court, which I remember yeah, from which a kid. That, one was, yeah, that yeah. one was probably, I think, the funniest uh, one I've the seen. The Brideless Groom yeah. with Shemp, mm -hmm. and then the, that one the, you just the, said. The Brideless Groom had that telephone scene where they're in <laughs> yeah. the booth. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they're trying to, like, yeah. uh, like he, he's trying to give get the nickel. Yeah. And they tangle in the cord, but they also tangle in the chain that's holding the phone book but, um, in place and everything. <laughs> what, what, what I liked like, about it was, like, I was afraid, like, now that I'm older and I haven't watched it since I was a kid, maybe I'd be like, ah, this is all right. Right, and I was afraid to be like real dated, mm -hmm. but like it still holds. No, it's up. Like, like I yeah. enjoyed it just as much as I did as a kid. I don't know. I've never seen their feature length movies. I don't know how. I don't know what those are like. Not as good. Yeah. Yeah, the, I think this works mm -hmm. as short. The thing is, yeah. like, uh, if they go on too long. Yeah. I, I feel mm -hmm. like the the Stooges are kind of like the Fleischer animations, where mm -hmm. like the Superman cartoons and Popeye were all amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But once the Fleischer studio tried to go into like uh, feature length animation because Disney did it, yeah. they just couldn't really do it right, yeah. and it just that's it how works it kind of feels. Short form, but yeah, yeah they, they're good. You know what? I like Shemp. I know people. Usually He's underrated. Shemp. No, yeah. I love yeah. Shemp. He's really good. I don't, I don't know what my original opinions on him. Were. 
Cooper, but watching this, I'm like, oh, he's fine. Yeah, like, yeah. I absolutely. prefer yeah. like you know the other three. Mm -hmm. the when ones I was that you a kid, of, but, like I mm -hmm. thought it was weird that there was another Stooge that mm -hmm. wasn't because I always knew Lo, mm -hmm. Mo, Larry, and Curly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I never heard of Shemp until I started watching the the uh, the mm -hmm. show with Leslie Nielsen yeah. where he would he would mm -hmm. just show them. And I remember like being like, oh, who, you know, who, who is he? But it, I thought he was always mm. just as funny as, yeah. as Carly was. He brings something different. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. they both kind of do something different, but either one works for mm -hmm. me. I don't think they're, to be honest, I don't think I really have a favorite lineup. Yeah. I, I don't really know the later lineups, but I don't really care. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, Shemp and uh, Curly are the, are the, 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 the first real two ones, lineups. Yeah. So those are good. Yeah. Uh, because uh, Joe Dorita, he's just doing a little bit too much of a curly thing. Yeah, but, um, yeah. Shemp has sort of a sincerity to him. Like, he almost looks like he's just not really trying to be funny. He's yeah. not there. He's just, he just can't help it. Like, in Brivas Groom, you were talking yeah. about, he's, they're trying to set him up with, uh, and, Bri and, and it kind of makes me feel he's a little bit like Crispin Glover in Back to the Future. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to s set him up, you know, Marty's trying to set him up with his mom. Mm -hmm. And he's just, just kind of like, oh, he doesn't know how to act. He's like, yeah. trying to like, fix his hair up. He was just like, like greasy he's, hair. Too, yeah, he's got like, that like know. greasy hair. It's like, he, he looks, so, you know, similar to Mo, but, you know. <laughs> it, he always with, reminded me of uh, Kramer. From, yeah, from Seinfeld. Oh, there's a lot yeah. of like, Seinfeld. I've always, like, Seinfeld directly him. referenced Stooges, but mm. Seinfeld took a lot of stuff from Stooges yeah. too. There's a few. I was noticing similarities. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mo, Mo and um, Shemp look the most alike. You can tell they're brothers. Yeah. yeah. Um, Curly. Curly actually. He. Um, he had. Um, he just shaved his head, and that was just that became mm. the thing. But he had. He used to have a lot of hair and like a handlebar mustache and stuff. <laughs> so it was to totally wow. different cool look. To I can, yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. even imagine. One of the funniest things about the Three Stooges is just um, seeing how many different jobs they can mess up. So they've been uh, plumbers, they've been um, uh, carpenters, gas station attendants, uh, soldiers, construction workers, <laughs> beer brewers, uh, football players, uh, chefs, <laughs> firefighters, yeah. you, you name it. And it's funny right away because you know that they're going to screw it up real bad. <laughs> Yeah, and the one uh, an ache for every yeah. or uh, an ache for every steak, though, where they're mm -hmm. delivering they deliver ice door to door to yeah. people mm -hmm. who have like ice boxes. Mm -hmm. But uh, they get to the woman's house and she has this long staircase. So and mm -hmm. it's like hot out. So like I, you know, Curly grabs the ice block. It's like this big. But by the time he gets upstairs, it's it's like a cube. That uh, was cracking me. Yeah. it's so simple. <laughs> yeah, it it's like and just me. how he's like, she's like, what is it? And he's like, oh, here, free sample. And he just puts it in her <laughs> pocket. <laughs> like yeah. It's, it's just stuff like that is like, uh, yeah. it, and they like, um, they're like, yeah. we'll bring the ice box to down to and bring it up. Yeah. So they put it in the ice box as this guy is coming home delivering a cake. As yeah. they're bringing the ice box up, it drops the thing, the ice cube, knocks him over <laughs> into the cake. He tries to run up and get them. Then they drop the entire ice box down the <laughs> stairs, which just starts like skidding down these stairs. I yeah. like, um, I like the sort of, I, I, they're like musicians often, yeah. too, right? Because uh, Brideless Groom, Larry's like playing the piano, mm -hmm. Shem's teacher to sing. Well, he's and a then, real musician too, yeah, like Larry Yeah, and then in uh, Disorder in the Court, they the talk violin. about they were like musicians and they're playing and they're clearly not playing the yeah. instruments, which is what, like, yeah. like Curly's just like touching well, the even, yeah, even though he was like sound. being like ridiculous That is about a funny it. scene yeah. though, yeah. And when he um, swallows the harmonica, <laughs> yeah. oh, he swallows yeah. it and he's like making the noises. Yeah. Oh, God. What I like is that they not only do they do a really bad job at whatever profession they're in, they also make fun of the profession itself. Like in Movie Maniacs, they're trying to get into movies. And uh, I think Larry s says to Mo, he's like, How are we going to get in pictures? We know nothing about movies. There's a couple of thousand people in pictures now know nothing about it. Three more won't make any difference. <laughs> and in, in plumbing we will go and they're plumbers um he says well if we didn't forget something we wouldn't be plumbers yeah <laughs> no they're it's just like uh every single thing they do the the comedy that's like hidden mm -hmm. in there and everything it's not just like them doing slapstick stuff like mm -hmm. it's really like well orchestrated mm -hmm. well choreographed yeah. everything is just put together in a, in in such a way like you you know that certain things are gonna happen like the, there's one where he opens the drawer mm -hmm. and then he ducks down and yeah. the drawers open and, but when he comes up into it you know he's gonna hit his head but yeah. he smashes through it <laughs> they go like one and, step yeah like, like, it's like, like so you like, don't really you think the head would have yeah, been yeah. fine but they're yeah. like nah let's do it let's yeah. open it and yeah. he just explodes <laughs> through it yeah. see the appeal of, of slapstick is just that it exists in this reality where um, physics are always against you yeah. and you know that if somebody throws something in the air guaranteed it's gonna come down and hit you in the head mm -hmm. it's not gonna land here it's not gonna land there it's gonna just bang hit you yeah. right in the head and um, I love when they set up a gag. It's it's kind of funny just enough knowing what's 
gonna happen. There's one uh, part of my scotch where they, um, they're carpenters in the beginning and they're working on like, a door or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I think Curly, he puts a, a piece of wood on top of a table and then like saws through it with one of those um, uh, circular saws. Mm -hmm. And he goes through it, but he, he doesn't put anything like under it. He just puts the wood on top of the table. So not only does he saw through the wood, he saws through the whole table, <laughs> but, yeah, but the table doesn't fall apart yet. You know it's there, mm -hmm. and then Mo is standing up on a ladder, and then he gets down to step on the table, and you know what's going to happen. He steps right through that table and falls yeah. right on his fucking face. <laughs> I mean, it, the Stooges are kind of relatable because, like, we've all had like a job that where there was mm -hmm. like an easy task, and we probably fucked up pretty bad. Mm -hmm. Like when I almost burnt down Screenwave Media. Yeah. Uh, oh, I. I had to drill a uh, TV stand into the wall. And I'm like, oh, how hard could it be? And then I drilled next to like the stud where there was a wire and fried the wire and smoke yeah. started coming Tony, out of the wall. Tony hit the wire in such a way that like, if he hit it just in like a millimeter to the right, it would have vaporized it. Much. Like, <laughs> so it was that bad. coming out of the wall, like Ryan had to cut through oh it. My first, God. Like, first Tony does that and then he comes into the other room and I'm building a table or something. <laughs> And he's like, hey, uh, I, I messed up the, the, the wall mount. I'm like, oh yeah, what happened? He's like, well, I drilled into the wall and I hit a wire, I think, because a bunch of smoke came out of the wall. <laughs> and I was just like, and this is after shouldn't you tell someone about and I like oh. jump up, like I didn't know what to do. And then we go back to the room and Tony's just like, oh, the smoke stopped. <laughs> oh. And I was just like, problem to care of it's, it is relatable. Like yeah. I'm sure one of us in our life, well, that was mine. Yeah, had yeah. a real simple task that just went nuts. Yeah, yeah. And, uh. and whenever that happens, there, there's so much. The Three Stooges is such a part of our like you know memory that mm. when that happens, you, you you know you say like that was such a Stooge moment, yeah. or like you know you do something like that, and then just in the back of your head you hear whoa 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 <laughs> yeah yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah pop goes the weasel or something <laughs> or like. You know, Another thing that makes them really appealing uh, to me is that when you watch uh, these old films, you can tell where it's dated. You can tell that um, this is a time capsule. You're looking at the 30s and 40s. Um, but when you're watching these, something strikes you as um, as atypical. Or when you're looking at films in that period, you're, you're used to seeing performers always wearing suits and mm. acting proper. Even if it's comedy, even if they're being funny, there's still some kind of standard to the comedy. People back then didn't typically make total asses of themselves. <laughs> so yeah. th when people saw this back then, it must have been outrageous. Yeah. And critics hated them. Oh. So that's another appeal is that they were for the audience. They weren't for the critics. I I was thinking about that today. I was kind of mm -hmm. like, I feel like this is kind of the same thing when, when I was a kid and, and watching things like Beavis and Butthead mm -hmm. yeah. or, or South Park yeah. where it was just, everyone was like, this is awful. I can't yeah. believe this. Like you, you don't show your kids this kind of mm -hmm. stuff. And I was like, this is probably in the 1940s mm -hmm. and stuff. That's what these people were probably, there was probably people rallying against this show. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. it's violent, but it's like, it's, it's not hilarious. Like super violent. No, but. it's not it's like I mean, there's not blood and everything, but I mean, they are like yeah, hitting yeah. each other with hands. Well, I mean, yeah, there, I there's think like they, putting it, there's know. a lot of vice grips that yeah. they put. Yeah, they the, put the someone's head episodes in. you said oh. they had the vice <laughs> grip. <laughs> no, like, vice grip. Oh yeah. no, yeah, the nail. Sometimes they get like a nail gun into their butt or something yeah. like that. You know. Oh wait, like, disorder in the court. They're opening fire oh, in the yeah, courtroom. Shoot, I'm like, holy oh yeah, shit, takes the guy's shoot. gun when he with the with the toupee and he's like, it's a tarantula. And, he, you know, <laughs> shoot and they got hurt a lot too. Yeah. Like they actually, I can tell. Like, yeah, and even the um, even when pies, even when they're throwing pies, apparently um, when they would throw those pies, um, they only had so many, so they couldn't do many takes. So when they would throw a pie in the face and they had to do it again they would actually have to scoop up all the pie that was on the floor. Uh, oh. And when they did that, sometimes there was nails and stuff on the floor. Uh. So when they started throwing the pies, they would get like nails to the face and stuff wow. like that. Yeah. <laughs> They're like the um, original Jackie Chan stunt team. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, and even um, not to take the fun away, but like it's actually really sad that when Curly died of a stroke, um, they think it may have been from just years and years and years of getting smacked in the face all the time. Oh, that wow. Eventually, like, so that it really did a number on these guys. And um, so they, they really put themselves out there just for the sake of comedy. Yeah. And um, you usually hear yeah. that with athletes. You don't mm. really hear it with yeah, actors. Yeah, like wrestling too much. and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like wrestling yeah. and football, there's a yeah. lot of like stuff like that. But 
you wouldn't think the Three Stooges would have the same effect. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah they got hurt a lot. I mean, that's probably, though, at the same time, like, there's nothing like them anymore. Mm -hmm. That's not a cartoon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the closest thing I can think of that's, like, Ren, uh, is Ren and Stimpy, where... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where uh, and and even Stimpy is based off Larry mm -hmm. Fine yeah. and and Ren is based off Mo pretty much, but yeah. that you don't see this kind of a physical comedy. I, I don't think anymore. The closest mm -hmm. I can think of is some parts of Trailer Park Boys. Yeah, mm -hmm. there there are moments. I don't know if you ever seen Trailer Park Boys, James, but there are moments mm -hmm. where like a character will just go to a store to buy some cigarettes. And we'll end in like a shootout. It's always a shootout. Really. There, there's a great moment. No one I, ever gets hit yeah. though. It's always just shooting yeah. and no gotta, one gets hit except for the one guy, there's, Ricky. There's one scene where it's basically a Three Stooges thing. It's Ricky has to drill a little towel holder into a wall. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's all he has to do. By the uh -huh. end of the whole bit, he's trashed the girl's house, the toilets in the living room. But yeah. so like, that's the closest thing I can think of <laughs> to Three Stooges today, where like a, something starts off real simple and they fuck up so bad and ends up causing so much mayhem. Oh, okay. But yeah, there are uh, a, outside yeah, of yeah. that, and that's only sometimes outside. There's not a lot of stuff like yeah. Three Stooges around. Yeah, and on top of like putting themselves like their actual like bodies out on the line mm -hmm. you know for, for the sake of comedy they also didn't really get paid a lot either from what i understand like yeah well this they, is old know, hollywood i could believe yeah that. um but these guys in particular like um you know as mo was their manager and uh when he would get the check he would have to split it with the three of them so oh, yeah. they didn't even get their own paychecks yeah so you just get the sense that um these were just three legit guys just that they got famous for doing a very specific, you know, role mm -hmm. and they just kept it going. It was like, you know, this is our, this is our gig, you know, we're just mm -hmm. going to, uh, you know, run with it and just yeah. keep it going. And they did for decades, you know, yeah. from the, I mean, they're doing the, in the twenties on stage all the way up till the, the end of the sixties. I mean, actually their last, um, thing they ever did on film was in the seventies. It was, wow, they went actually, that long. Yeah. And they're like, by that point, they're like, it's like, okay, wow, like you could tell it's like time for them to stop. Yeah. Like, you know. I had the DVD set uh, a, a few years back um, when I was in college. Mm -hmm. I, I bought a DVD set of just like a bunch of their movies, but it had a lot of the cartoons. Oh, yeah, And yeah. they would always do little sketches in the beginning, but you could tell like mm -hmm. most likely I think Mo dyed his hair because it was mm -hmm. in color now. Oh, okay. Because oh, okay. his hair was like still jet black and this is like, you yeah. know, the cartoon was 70 something. Yeah, so yeah. So this is like literally. I've seen him with the gray bowl cut mm -hmm. like on, on a on a show. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the last time, um, the last film I did was that, uh, oh, that weird like camping one. Oh, God. Cook's Tour, I think it was called Cook's Tour or something mm -hmm. like that. But that I, I I don't recommend that one at all. <laughs> Watch the stuff from mainly the 30s and 40s. And they and were yeah. on Scooby Doo also. Oh yeah, the Scooby Doo with like, celebrity Scooby Doo, <laughs> Scooby -Doo <laughs> episodes I and think, stuff. Yeah, yeah, which was uh, that would have been Curly Joe at that. Yeah, point. it was Curly yeah. Joe. Yeah. Cuz they're like, "Wow, it's Larry Mo and Curly yeah. Joe." Yeah. You know, even <laughs> when like even when uh Larry died, Mo was going to continue it with um Harry, who was actually played by who's going to be played by em Emil Sitka. And he was one of the guys who would be like one of the co-stars or he would, he was always working with the Three Stooges behind the scenes all the time for decades. So it wasn't like he just grabbed any guy, mm -hmm. he grabbed like the next best guy he could have got. And they actually have one promotional picture uh, with the new yeah. lineup and, um, and then Mo died. So ah, after oh. that it was over. Yeah. Um, and so he kept going like until yeah, the end. That's until the crazy. end, yeah. Um, especially for something so physically demanding. Yeah. Another thing to mention is the uh, the special effects. Um, a lot of the the humor comes from that you can tell how they did something. Mm -hmm. They use dummies a lot. Yeah. If somebody falls, it's it's usually I think there's one where they're firefighters and they go down like the the fire pole and mm -hmm. you see the dummies hit the ground, but then it like does like a cut. Yeah, and, then and they're it's like, them yeah. all of a sudden <laughs> popping up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, oh yeah, and then Larry's head like falls into his body, but you can tell it's like a, you know, a, a yeah. dummy around him. Yeah. And then Mo like pulls his head out of his body. <laughs> um, uh, and then there's like those reverse shots where like there's one. Um, in Disorder where, in the Court, there's one where they, uh, he's yeah. playing like uh, the cello and it he, like, shoots and it goes in the guy's the, mouth. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Then you tell it's like reverse. They, they yeah. like pull it out. It's really it's funny like, like the way it just, he's like, ooh, and yeah, it just yeah. gets in his mouth. <laughs> exactly. Every scene with that toupee guy was great. Just yeah. that poor guy. Yeah. <laughs> and the parrot. The parrot yeah. that was a puppet, but when they blasted with water, it looked like they really I, hit that parrot I with water. I think what they scared. did was they had the parrot on the thing, yeah. and then they had the fake parrot 
shot it with water, but it was such a quick cut. I hope they got that. The thing was like when it when it cut away, it was definitely like a fake parrot. But yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I hope they didn't spray a parrot with a, <laughs> with a fire hose. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, they the were spraying are. that one guy, and you could tell that thing had some pressure against yeah. it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and you know, like, one of the funniest things about it is the sound effects. It's such a big part of the Oh, movie. yeah, like it, the cartoony sound effects, but in a live I, I like that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, there's such great Foley work going on. And what's also funny is that there's hardly any music in any of them. Mm. So you just get that dead air, and then just boom, boom. Yeah. And there's these weird sound effects mm. that are going on. I also love how the plots make almost no sense. Um, that where the short begins and where it ends really has nothing mm -hmm. to do. Yeah. There's one called Three Pests in a Mess where basically it starts off where there are the, these um, these door-to-door -door salesmen who are trying to sell this ridiculous fly trap, um, <laughs> which makes no sense to begin with. I mean, Curly, I think, explains it that... Um, it's this like stairwell and there's a mirror at the bottom. The fly comes in and goes up the stairwell like a fly would walk. Yeah. And then yeah. it goes up to the top and then it sees its reflection in the mirror, thinks it's another fly trying to intrude on its home or whatever. And then it goes down and apparently like blows its brains out by hitting the, the ground. Hard <laughs> so that's anyway, he's going around selling this thing and that's just the start of the episode. And then they get mixed up with, um, some gangsters who are trying to get money off them that think that they have like their money or whatever mm. and then they're they're chasing them they end up at like a department store where one of them accidentally shoots a mannequin and then they think it's a dead body <laughs> so then they <laughs> stuff it in a bag and they take it out to a cemetery to bury it and then somebody spots them and then calls the cops or the cemetery owner or whatever and they happen to be at a masquerade party and then the so they're dressed up as like a skeleton and a devil or whatever. And then they come over to the cemetery and then the three stooges get scared because they think that they, there's like uh, real ghouls. So it, the, the beginning has nothing to do with the end. Yeah. And just, it goes on this, this weird path. It just has nothing to do with. <laughs> That's pretty ridiculous. The, this, uh, a, an ache for every steak starts off with them delivering the ice. Yeah. Then it gets into them yeah, having cooking. to make a, yeah. Having yeah. to make a dinner and, a, and mm -hmm. everything for the, for this woman's <laughs> husband's birthday. But yeah, it starts yeah. with them just delivering ice and it's, that's the first yeah. five, six minutes of it. And then all of a sudden they scare the, uh, the, the chef out. Yeah. Scare the maid out, and then they are now employed with like making the food, and they're terrible, and it's awful. Yeah, a it's dash of course of like soap. yeah, a dash, dash. Of, yeah, <laughs> of baking powder. And he's like dash, <laughs> and it's like, and he's like uh, like one more, uh, and then like it, it, it. That's kind of how I, I think a lot of things borrow from that though too. Mm -hmm. Later on in the Simpsons, when when the Simpsons started like in the two thousands and stuff, they yeah. used to do that where the episode would start off completely in a different place than where it ends. Yeah. It wasn't originally like that, but like around like season 10 they started is when they that. started that, really yeah. using that a lot. And I think like that was them being like, ah, oh, well, Three Stooges did yeah. it. Like, yeah. Uh, so I guess we'd end with talking about our favorite shorts. We mentioned Disorder in the Court. Yeah, I think that's, that's the one I remember the most as a kid. And I'm glad mm -hmm. that's the one you sent me. Because yeah. then I remembered how much I liked it. That's the only one Curly flips the bird. Yeah. He totally yeah. flips the bird. Uh, the one I remember <laughs> um, the most from that is like, call him your honor. He's like, okay, my honor. It's like, <laughs> yeah. no, no. Take the no, stand. That, that episode, I mean, originally mine was an, an, an ache for every yeah. steak. Yeah. That was mine. But oh, yeah. the, uh, we got to mention the, uh, just before we get off of disorder in the court that take, uh, take off your hat. Um, raise your <laughs> right hand. Because yeah. he's got a cane in one that hand. That whole part, <laughs> like. Take, take off your hat. Raise your right hand. Take off your hat. Yeah, he Raise your hat right back hand. In, he puts the hat back on. <laughs> Raise your right hand. I like that. Yeah. Not, not, a, not my honor. Your honor. What? Yeah. You don't like him? You'll, yeah, you'll, you'll refer to him as your honor. As, yeah. Hoi polloi. I think it's hoi polloi. Hoi okay. polloi. That's a really good Basically, that one's about... Um, uh, there's these uh, this like gentleman's club or whatever. Mm. And they um, two guys have uh, a bet. They say, like, you know, I, I bet you I can take like three ordinary guys on, on the streets and like make them into gentlemen. Mm -hmm. and, and then they of course get the three stooges and yeah. they come into this gentleman's club and they put them in suits and everything, uh, tuxedos, whatever it is. And, they, and then they're like, they do exactly what you expect. They make a total mess of the place. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the part that sticks out is um, Curly is, is uh, 
he's dancing with somebody, he's dancing with this woman, and he gets this spring, uh, like, stuck to his back. Okay. And then the, the spring gets stuck to somebody else's back, and, like, he gets getting, yeah, he gets getting pulled okay. back. He, and then there's a part where he keeps getting bounced from the floor, and I don't even know how they did it. And don't tell me it's strings, it probably is. Yeah. But I, how the hell did they hide the strings? So he's, like, bouncing back and forth, and um, that's really funny. And at the end... N not only do they make a mess of the place, but then they turn everybody else into stooges because by the end of the episode, everybody else is slapping each other in the face and like, <laughs> throwing pies or whatever. Um, there's one called Violent is the Word for Curly. And uh, that one, it starts off where they're like gas station attendants or something. Mm. And uh, the part that sticks out to me is when um, they're trying to do like a full service to them and they're like having breakfast in their like in their car and they have their window uh pushed forward where the, the food is on top of the window and then the stooges go to pull the window up to wash it and then all the food falls on them <laughs> <laughs> um so if it starts there but then by the end of it they're like professors and then they do that weird uh like alphabet song that, which is really catchy, mm. um, but there's something about that that's really funny too. Uh, I mentioned Plumbing We Will Go, that might be my favorite one, because that one has a great example of Mo just being bossy. He's mm. bossy the whole thing. Uh, uh, Larry says something like, oh, I'll go shut the water off. He's like, well, what, if I wanted your opinion, I'll ask you. Go shut the water off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you have that whole section where Curly is in the bathtub and he's trapping himself with all the pipes. So every time when he attaches the pipe and the water's coming out, he has to add another pipe <laughs> and then another one and another one. And then soon he's just surrounded by yeah. pipes. <laughs> and then in that same episode, um, they find wires in some of the pipes because it's like an electrical line. Mm. And then Moe's like, well, what's that, what are the wires doing in that pipe? Get rid of them. <laughs> and then they start hooking it up to the water. And then <laughs> in the logic of this short, that means that anything electrical in the whole house, water is going to start coming out of it. So yeah. water's coming out the light bulb, water's coming out the TV. <laughs> and, oh, my God. Meanwhile, they would just all be dead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, like we said, you know, we love the Three Stooges. We love everything about them. But mm -hmm. uh, just as as a warning, though, yeah. uh, just to be serious for a minute, is that, um, you know, as a curator of film, I feel responsible to let you know that as much as I recommend the Three Stooges, there are some of the shorts that contain racial stereotypes, which are not funny whatsoever. No. And, uh, you know, they were wrong back then. They're wrong now. Um, so that's just something uh, as a word of precaution. Yeah. Um, but as a whole, their body of work, um, they are um, hilarious entertainers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're great. 